What? What is that? Is that a space potato? I don't think it is. Anyway, welcome to What The Math everyone, this is Anton, and today we're talking about Varuna, one of the interesting or more interesting objects out there in the solar system that we actually have a name for. Welcome, enjoy the video. <laughs> So yes, it does look like a space potato, but it obviously is not because this is a very, very large object, approximately, uh, well, actually it says 900 kilometers in diameter here, but it is currently has been revised to about 640 kilometers, meaning that this right here is about 640 kilometers. This object is very unusually shaped, very similar in shape to Haumea, which is an object we've talked about previously, and that is because if you look from this side, and if I actually accelerate time right here, oh, wrong button, here we go. It is spinning really fast. It is a very, 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 very fastly rotating object. It only takes it about six hours to spin once, meaning that one day here is very short, um, which is why it is so strangely shaped. It's sort of like an elliptical shape as, as we actually call it here. I'll show it to you what it looks like from the top. So if you look from the top, it's actually, uh, it is a circle, but from the side, it's not, it's an ellipse. Now, so Varuna is actually a, a pretty cool object. It was found back in 2000 uh, by a person uh, working for Space Watch. Uh, I think it's a person by the name of Robert McMillan. And uh, back then it didn't really have a name right away, but because we didn't have many of these objects, as a matter of fact, there were almost no um, trans-Neptunian objects found back then. This was one of the first ones, not the first, but one of the first. Uh, we were so impressed by it that we decided to give it a name. And Varuna is a Hindu god of um, water, or liquid, I guess, and also immortality. So um, for some reason, they decided to give it, uh, this particular object the name of Varuna. Now, uh, we didn't know much about it because it's so far away and it's relatively small. Um, the distance from our planet Earth is about 42 astronomical units. Uh, so it is very, very far. It's farther away than Pluto. Now, even after 16 years, uh, we haven't really discovered much about it. Uh, like, for example, it doesn't actually have a moon. And because of that, we can't really estimate its mass. We don't really know what its mass is, but we think its density is approximately 0.99. Um, which is slightly lower than water. Basically, if you were to put this in the water, it would actually float, but it would obviously never happen. Uh, but uh, interestingly, because it's lower than water, we think that, well, it, it's kind of interesting. First of all, first theory is that there's a lot of holes and a lot of sort of caves and a lot of caverns here. Basically, a lot of empty space on the inside. And the second theory is that uh, something else is going on here. We may have miscalculated, we may have overestimated its size or overestimated something. And so maybe the density is completely wrong. But because there's actually very little water ice on the surface, um, we know that this object is relatively dark. It's actually much more red than you even see on this, um, in this video. Uh, so the surface here is a lot redder and it's one of the darker objects out there because basically it doesn't actually have a lot of water ice on the surface. Most of the surface is covered with a lot of other things, uh, specifically carbon-based materials. And there's even some methane here, which is very unusual for a small object like this. So we, we think that uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a theory going on, um, basically that the reason why it's spinning so fast and the reason why there is actually methane present on this smaller object, because usually methane just evaporates. It evaporates from smaller objects almost right away. Uh, so yeah, there must have been something that happened to this object and specifically here we're talking about a collision that possibly collided with uh, Varuna, I don't know, several billion years ago, maybe several million years ago, and it struck it this way. Uh, so whatever hit it must have brought methane and also brought uh, the fast sp spin to it. And so this is why it's spinning so fast and this is why it actually still has methane on the surface that is uh, still kind of there. But with time, this methane will be gone and it will possibly lose a bit of its mass as well. And another sort of interesting thing about it, and this is kind of what reinforces the idea of collision, or I guess maybe doesn't reinforce the idea of collision, depending on how you look at it, is that if you look at its orbit, and here I'm going to show it to you from this angle, it's almost completely circular, which is very unusual. If you look at this particular shape, it, it is as close to a circle for these types of objects as you can get. 
uh, the uh, eccentricity here is like 5%, 0.05, uh, which is super, super low. Pluto has a much higher eccentricity than this, but this uh, unusual dwarf planet doesn't. So it may have actually stayed in this particular orbit for a very long time, and how it got there, we don't really know. But once again, collision sort of reinforces that this idea because maybe it did have a very elliptical orbit before maybe it was more elliptical but then something collided with it giving it a little bit of um extra velocity which then magically or i guess not magically but uh luckily made its orbit more circular which is a very interesting explanation but i guess uh this would kind of explain why it is so unusually circular for the trans neptunian objects which are orbiting in this particular region Oh, and by the way, one orbit of uh, Varuna takes about 283 years. So basically one year is 283 days, or whereas one day, if you stand on the surface, and if you basically just land here and kind of just look into the sky, this will only be about six hours. Now, unlike Pluto, it's actually um, called a classical trans object. It's not a Plutino, which is a topic I've previously covered, um, because it doesn't actually have any resonance at all. So, in other words, it is orbiting um, past Neptune, but Neptune has absolutely no effect on it. And, uh, ooh, look at the beautiful night. That is so gorgeous. Um, and if Planet 9 exists, it probably has no effect on it either. Or if it does, we obviously don't really know what that effect is. It is so dark and creepy. I'm going to get out of here right now. So, yeah, this object would be quite far away from hypothetical Planet 9 and also um, quite far, uh, far away from Neptune um, because it's actually about... Um, 14 to 13 astronomical units away from Pluto. So Pluto is actually very far away and Pluto is affected by Neptune, but Varuna is not. It's actually not affected by any of the planets. But it is a pretty interesting object nevertheless and hopefully one day we'll get to visit it because uh, there's some really cool things here. So the surface is, we think, is very rich in different minerals because it's sort of, um, it's experienced a collision possibly and because it's not a very reflective object, we think there's a lot of uh, stuff going on here, a lot of possibly precious minerals, a lot of really interesting things we can actually mine one day. So if we actually end up landing on this object one day, maybe whoever does it will become very, very rich if minerals are still expensive as they are today. But interestingly, even after 16 years, this object has still not been um, classified as a dwarf planet, and it's still just known as a trans-Neptunian object that just happens to have a name. Uh, and its uh, full name is 20,000 Varuna. And 20,000 here refers to the fact that this used to be one of the largest trans-Neptunian objects uh, before many others were discovered. And this also used to be the largest uh, non plutino or uh, the largest classical trans-Neptunian object that is not influenced by Neptune. But once again, it, I think it lost its title now because there were some other ones that have been found. And because we've discovered that the size of this object is probably a little bit smaller than we used to think. We used to think that it was about this big thousand kilometers in, in diameter but it's actually a little bit smaller and unfortunately that is all we know about this space potato known as varuna and unfortunately that is all i can tell you about it because it is still a mystery to us maybe one day we'll get to visit it maybe there will be another new horizon mission uh, new horizon 2 new horizon 3 mission that will actually visit this object and fly by and take pictures but as of now we don't really plan to do it if we do actually launch um, a satellite, it will take about 16 years to reach it using a Jupiter slingshot maneuver. And it is actually not a very difficult maneuver and it's actually relatively easy to do. Uh, but like I mentioned in the, one of the previous videos, we unfortunately do not currently have any battery material left. We don't have any plut uh, plutonium-238 left. Other than that, that is all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with your friends and like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about another object from our solar system. Game you later and as always, bye bye. And goodbye to you too, space potato. I will see you some other time.